Hello Reason People, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. And today we're going to be looking at how to configure your external MIDI devices, no matter how old and what they happen to be. And we're going to be looking at how to configure these correctly in Reason. I see so many people who write on the forums or on Facebook and basically they, they configure them up incorrectly. And then other people say, oh, it's going to be a nightmare to put all these devices into Reason, go and use another door, blah, blah, blah. It is so easy to do in Reason, and I'm going to show you how. Um, oh, and just look at all these lovely cables. This is one of the reasons I think us old school people love Reason so much. One of the biggest mistakes what people do is they try and configure it all under this advanced MIDI. That's what they try and do. Now, as far as I care, that advanced MIDI really should be saying legacy MIDI. And the reason it should be saying legacy MIDI is purely because it came from Reason 1, around about Reason 3, that's when they introduced remote mapping. And really, that's how you should be getting your instruments in, especially as you want to record them. If you just wanted to play your instruments and use Reason purely as a, another device, you know, another musical device, and not use any of the other proper functionality of it, you could do that, but hey, we're Reason users, and we know we want to use Reason to its fullest. Let's just jump into this and see how we should really configure it correctly. One thing I forgot to mention about the advanced MIDI is you cannot record into the sequencer, and that's why this is, I refer to it as the legacy, the legacy way of, of doing things. So what I'm gonna quickly do now is just set myself up a surface controller, and obviously under edit preferences and under control surfaces, I'm just going to click on add and I'm going to very, very quickly go to other and I'm going to select my MIDI device, which happens to be this USB MIDI cable. I haven't got my other sound devices actually set up yet. Now, let's quickly grab an instrument as well and I'm actually going to grab Radical Piano. Obviously, the, the issue is, or what people fall into this trap now, if I play the Korg, I can play that. If I now hit my Octipad, or I strum on my little Casio. It's all playing the same device because service controllers ignore individual MIDI channel. You know, it just brings it all into one. So that's not much use for us. You know, I've got myself three instruments here or I might have one instrument with multiple MIDI outs. So what can we do? Well, there's two ways around this and I'm going to show you two different methods. One method, and this is my preferred method really when I'm dealing with multiple uh, MIDI channels, is there's a nice little codex out there and I'll put the link in the description. Now, when we get this downloaded, it's a simple little zip file and it's got a codex in it, it's got some maps in it and there's a nice little readme file in there so you can go into the readme and it'll actually show you exactly where you need to install this stuff. So I'm just gonna quickly highlight them too. And where it has to go, let's say again, it'll all be put the locations in the description. So under your program data, prehel ahead, remote, I'm just going to grab these two files and just drop them into my remote. And this is obviously for the Mac and PC, obviously here, but it's, you know this works on the Mac as well. So obviously there's a map directory. I'm just going to say yes, I'm going to say yes to the codex, and that's that installed. So what that's actually given me is a codex which appears under other. So I'm just going to delete this one out. This is the one I just made earlier. Now, when I click on add, I go to other. Now, ah, right. Usually, when we deal with codex, you can add them and you can just come straight into here. What I'm going to have to do is restart reason. So give me one second and I'll be straight back. I'm back. So here we go, under Edit Preferences, Control Surface, click on Add. Now once I've selected some other, you can see all these extra MIDI channels have now appeared. And once you've set this up once, you don't have to come back and set it up again. So think about how you're setting up, think about what names you're gonna give things, just so it makes a little bit of sense. And you know what you're looking at. So what I'm going to do here, this is a name, what you can actually call it wherever you want. I'm actually going to leave the word channel one in and because this happens to be my 
USB device, I'm going to call it USB channel one. And the input port is going to be my USB MIDI cable. Click OK. Now it tells me about my out ports not configured. Don't worry about that. You can leave your out port blank. Then I'm going to click on add again and under other. And basically you should really do this for all 16 channels. Um, I'm just going to do three channels because obviously I've just got my three little devices here, but you'd get that you'll understand. So again, so say this is going to be a USB and I'm going to select exactly the same port, USB MIDI cable, and click OK, and I get that little error telling me about the output. And you get this little exclamation mark. Don't worry, if you click on it, it'll tell you. It's just saying that it's actually been in use on another port. But don't forget, we're all going to be using this on different channels, so it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to put in my last one, and this happens to be MIDI channel 10 because it's my Octipad. So in the good old days, channel 10 is from drums. So USB. Oops, one, that one's the one I want. Imports. And there we go. So we've got all three of them. Little exclamation marks. Exclamation marks are good. What you don't want is red crosses. Um, so if you've got ticks and green ticks, that's great. If you've got a red cross, that's bad. So here's my nectar. I'm just going to quickly turn my nectar off. If I turn my nectar off, it goes into a red cross. So that means obviously there's issues there. But we know why you've got issues because I just turned it off. So let's see now what we can do with this. So this time what I'm going to do is add radical piano. And as before, Piano, the corks playing it. My drum's going to play it, and my and my guitar's going to play it. Well, hang on, that's exactly the same. You're saying, well, there is a little bit something different because now, if you right click, we can see we've got these devices here which I've set up, and what it means is I can now lock channel two, this radical piano, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show in another reason device, obviously. And it's quick. Bab. There we go. And I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to lock channel 10. That's my drums to that device. And then obviously what I need down here is, uh, well, I suppose ideally, I suppose I need some kind of guitar sound. So let's have a quick look and see what we can find here. There we go, dual stick. Should probably have a few little ID8s in it. And I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna lock channel one to that. So now, I'll, I'll tell you what else I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna shove in the Thor. There. So, and the reason I'm shoving in the Thor is sort of as proof to say, well, this has actually got the focus of all these other devices which aren't locked. So with these other devices up locked, so they're all pointing at Thor. And what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to play my Korg T1. I'm now going to play my Octipad. And I'm now going to strum. And hey presto, there they all are. And if I really, really wanted to, obviously, um, we can start arming things up and we can actually start firing things off and record. So if I hit record here, that's recording, that's recording up there, and that's recording down here, and there is my Thor as well. And it's, and it's that straightforward. And really, that's the first method. And that's my preferred method. Um, as I say, I can add my other remaining channels. Once it's configured, when I go to a new document, they're there, ready for me just to right click and lock things into. And it is that quite, and it is that straightforward. So where a lot of other people say, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, it, you don't have to. 
I'm now going to look at my second method and it's a little bit long-winded. However, it does give you a hell of a lot more um, flexibility of what you're going to be doing with your MIDI coming in. So really this kind of method is more for people who have a lot of equipment um, coming in and you might want to configure it in really different ways and it, it really does give you some big advantages. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got this loop MIDI or MIDI loop back program I run. Um, obviously the Mac has the equivalent and I'm just going to quickly set myself up a few new ports. So let's call this one Roland because this is to do with my Octopad. And obviously I've got the core which will be coming in and I've got that toy SEO. So I'm going to set myself three ports up and we can see them running up there now. And then the second bit of software I'm going to want to run up is something called MIDIOX. Here it is. Now there's my uh, USB MIDI uh, port coming in, or MIDI cable coming in. And the great thing about what this device is and, and, and what I really like about this software probably more than anything else is if I am playing my guitars or my piano or my drum or whatever it happens to be. So I have to really hit my drum. Um, you can see it's got the MIDI data coming in and that's totally irrelevant from reason. So this is a great way of seeing, you know, is my MIDI even getting into my PC correctly? So that's what I like about this bit of software. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the ports I have just added in. Randomly shove them in here. That one. I've now got my three ports. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to do disconnect all. It automatically maps it up to their own internal one. So what this allows me to do is say, right, I'm going to take my external, or my, this is my external MIDI port, and where am I going to point it to? And in this particular case, I am actually going to point it to all three. And then what I'm able to do is, is actually map my MIDI ports. So I'm going to say none, because it's easier to, say, to deselect all 16 channels, and then channel 10, that's for my drums. Same thing again, and select none. My fork happens to be MIDI channel two at the moment, purely because my guitar thing's on MIDI channel one, and I'm not sure if I can actually change that. It's been such a long time since I played with it. So now, and you can quite simply say, and you've seen what I've done by configuring up the MIDI channels, nice and simple. And it's in here, this is really where I'm saying you can get some real extra flexibility if you wanted to, because obviously I could say, well, actually, with my core, I want you to play on channel one and two. So that's going to mean I'm going to, you know, you, you can start to get some interesting layers going on. Um, when I bring this stuff back into Reason, and we'll go over that as well. So I'm just going to leave it configured like that. So that's, that's the box standard configuration. And then what we need to do is come back into Reason. And we're going to start adding the ports. So under other, we're not doing obviously our one to 16 at the moment. Is this going to be a box standard um, MIDI controller keyboard? And then under the input port, this is where I can say, all right, that's going to cork. And obviously it's on the cork. Let's call that, not a very good name, but I'm just going to call that cork. And then I can obviously click on add and click another, other. Going to be Roland. Let's call that Roland. And one more. And that's yeah, isn't it? That's it. And just like before, it's quite straightforward. We can now right click and we can now start locking stuff. So I'm going to lock my Roland to that. That's going to be my core. And this is going to be my Casio. And then I'm going to highlight this one to, to lock. Basically, the, all my other MIDI ports are going to follow my master. So wherever I'm clicking, that's where all these are going to go until you lock them out. One of the things I don't like about, you know, which I did do with reason is, it'd be nice if they put like a little symbol here to say actually these have already been locked. It'd be even better if it said where they were locked to. Um, 
And that's what was one thing I did like about the old advanced MIDI way is you could quite see it in a, a glance what was going to where. But you and the, you know under locking stuff, you got to remember. So now once again, there's guitar, a piano, and of course a drum. Quite straightforward, as I said, a little bit more long-winded, but you do get loads of extra functionality of actually how you can do your routine and you can do some, you know, some real nice things uh, from that routine. So that's the advantage of doing it that way. Well, I hope you found this video semi-useful and uh, for you new people or existing people, maybe you didn't know about that other codex out there for setting up your MIDI channels. Um, but happy reasoning. Until next time, bye for now.